Hello, I'm Sean Munger, and we're talking about the historical context of the James Bond films. This is number six, not counting the introduction, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And this is a really key crossroads in the history of the Bond franchise, which also mirrors a key moment of recent history. It's hard to over overestimate the existential crisis that the producers of the Bond films faced in 1968. Previously, the Bond films had been skating along on the formula that was developed in the first couple of films, but that was 1962, and the world had changed tremendously between 1962 and 1968. If James Bond was going to survive into the 70s, something was needed to change on a fundamental level. With Sean Connery gone, the producers, Albert Broccoli and Harry Saltzman, scrambled to find a replacement to play James Bond. Ultimately, they turned to George Lazenby, an Australian model and advertising man. Uh, most analysts and critics of the Bond films throw a lot of shade at uh, George Lazenby. Personally, I like him. Uh, his performance in On Her Majesty's Secret Service is a little weak, but I do believe that given other chances, he would have grown into the role admirably. Fortunately, though, uh, acting criticism is not why we're here. I'm here to give you the historical context of the films. And in October 1968, when they started filming On Her Majesty's Secret Service, there was a lot going on. The problems and crises uh, that were multiplying in the Western world in 1968 are really difficult to catalog. Politically, the world was going nuts. In April 1968, U.S. civil rights uh, leader Martin Luther King was gunned down in Memphis by a racist terrorist. Uh, in May, the entire country of France was shut down by student and labor strikes, an event which uh, eventually led to the resignation of Charles de Gaulle, the longtime president of France and the hero of the French resistance of World War II. In June 1968, Robert F. Kennedy, brother of the late president, was assassinated in Los Angeles while he was clearly on his way to winning the Democratic presidential nomination. The summer of 1968 saw widespread civil unrest and race riots in the United States, culminating in apocalypse in the streets of Chicago in August during the Democratic National Convention, where police ran rampant and protesters gave each other the finger through clouds of tear gas. That same month, August 1968, Soviet military forces invaded Czechoslovakia, one of Russia's own allies, because Soviet leader Brezhnev, a man with monstrous eyebrows who lived solely on vodka and unfiltered cigarettes, was utterly terrified by the prospect of Czechoslovakia's communist government giving even the slightest hint of political reform to its people. So 1968 was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Uh, oh, and speaking of nightmares, Vietnam was still going on, a bloodbath with no end in sight, and nobody, including President Lyndon Johnson, had any clue how to stop it. So how do you make a lighthearted, funny, adventurous Bond movie during all of this? Well, you can't. The series had milked everything they could out of the formula with You Only Live Twice in 1967, and for the next film, Bond had to change course if he was going to survive. On Her Majesty's Secret Service seemed to anticipate the huge changes that were coming in the next year, 1969. There was a new American president, Richard Nixon, a conservative, staunch anti-communist and hawk on Vietnam. De Gaulle was out in France, new hardline tack from Soviet Russia, an increasing radicalization both at home uh, in, in, in the USA and in Europe. I think On Her Majesty's Secret Service is a brilliant film. It rethinks and retains the best elements of the Bond series, while also daring to show some maturity and growth in the character of James Bond. In the film, he gets married uh, to the character played by Diana Rigg, and finally we see Bond as something more than a bulletproof cartoon character. Yet it still has action, a lot of car and ski chases, and the usual round of beautiful women and high-stakes gambling on the Riviera, fast cars, glamorous European high life, and that sort of thing. So in many ways, On Her Majesty's Secret Service is the best Bond film, or at least the one that most perfectly embodies what the series was trying to be. After a sprawling and difficult production, On Her Majesty's Secret Service premiered in London in December 1969. The 60s were almost over. The Manson family killings had happened in Los Angeles, and in December 1969, the disastrous rock concert at Altamont Speedway in California 
which is often cited as the quote unquote end of the 60s, uh, that had taken place. So the world was going into a new decade and all bets were off. This is really how people thought in 1969. Unfortunately, though, as good as On Her Majesty's Secret Service is, uh, the Bond producers were in the same conundrum that they found themselves in before. Uh, George Lazenby said before the film came out that he was not going to play the role of James Bond again, a colossal mistake of his career, ultimately. So now for the next film, the producers had to scramble to find a bankable star. Once again, they faced the existential question, could James Bond survive beyond the 1960s? Well, tackle that question in the next video uh, uh, about the next film, Diamonds Are Forever. Thank you.